When you start creating videos for YouTube, and YouTube is the right place to put them, even though some of the other websites may be a little nicer to work with, YouTube's the number two search engine on the planet. So you want to be going there. But when you first start putting stuff out there, your video just kind of ends. You do your little talking head thing or your presentation or whatever, and then it ends. At the end of all YouTube videos, they post a little rectangle with a whole bunch of other videos to go to. Now, people started learning that you needed to ask people to go to subscribe to your channel and stuff like that. They do this. Subscribe. Click the button below to subscribe. And so they started pointing to the bottom of the screen, and you might do that. And then people started learning about YouTube annotations. What I want to do today is to take you straight from, okay, that's how I can do the point to the bottom and ask people to subscribe, which is your first step. That's the basic thing. And if you're only doing like an iPhone video, you need to do that. But you also need to get to the point where you're asking people to look at your other videos and to subscribe and to do a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm going to show you how to do that in ScreenFlow. Uh, I would like to do that in Final Cut 10. I'll probably do that in another video. Uh, but I'm also going to show you what the other people are doing right now. Here, for example, is one of my YouTube videos where I've finally started learning to put annotations at the end. And you'll see when I get past my little blurb here, ending the video, uh, I'm going to ask people down here to join. And you can actually see that there's a, an annotation link, and there's a white box around that. That's a typical annotation. And here's the subscribe button that I've asked people to do. Now, it kind of tends to be pretty short. And here's the YouTube group of rectangles I was just talking about at the end of every video. If you look at some of the other really sophisticated channels like Jimmy Fallon over on uh, The Tonight Show, he's got all sorts of little boxes down here for you to subscribe and go to another episode. Uh, and one of my other favorites is Devin Graham, and he happens to uh, also show you several different videos, as well as the subscribe button. Uh, lots of these things uh, are great incentives for people to go click on something else. You want them to stay on what you have presented to them. So how do you manage to make these? Uh, it's... The trick of it is that all of this is actually embedded in his video. And so, you know, except for, of course, the annotations, which you have to add in YouTube. So if you get to the point at the end of your video where you need to do annotations, uh, you want people to be going to your videos, you're going to have to add that stuff. And I'm going to show you how to do that in ScreenFlow. Here's a screen flow that I have been working on, and I've made a couple of little changes to it here at the end. Uh, but I wanted to show a training program that I have, and here's a link that I want people to go to to see that training program. And then I'm going to add some extra, some of those video annotations to the end, so that I can hopefully get people to go subscribe, as well as to go to one of my other videos. This happens to be called the Simple Sunday Survey, and this was episode number four. So I have brought in this video, and it's a simple matter of dragging and dropping uh, from your finder if you're working on a Mac. And of course you're working on a Mac because this is ScreenFlow, right? You'd be in Camtasia if you're working on a Windows machine, and I'm sure it's very similar to that. So I dragged in this video, and I'll show you how to do that with some of the others that I'm going to add. I, the problem is that I don't really want this, didn't mean to do that, I don't really want this to be full screen, I don't want it to take up the whole window, but I also don't want the user to see what's behind there, so I've extracted the audio, and I'm going to take this screen recording bit, and I'm going to just back it up into the point where the video starts. So you'll see the screen recording, and then you should start seeing... And why there's some delay right now, I don't know. There's a little delay, a little glitch there. Uh, 
and then you should start seeing my video. And so we're going to overlay an annotation in YouTube for that. And then towards the end, I've got this, again, this background. And I do want people to see this for just a minute. And so I, I know in the audio that it ends right about here. And so I'm going to leave that there. And then I'm going to bring in a couple of other clips. I have created a folder out on my drive where I've got these. And here's that one you just saw. And I'm going to bring in the Simple Sunday Survey one for number two, which I want to appear in the timeline. And I'm going to drag that down here to where I have that starting. I also want this YouTube subscription graphic, which I grabbed out on Google. And I want that to appear. Obviously, it's too short. Uh, so I'm going to drag that all the way out to the end of my audio. This one is too long, which is okay. I'm going to just shrink that down to the end of the audio. And now I've got to simply place these. So I'm going to put this up here. I want it to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and I'm going to grow that. I want this to be the same size, so you see the yellow lines are appearing. And I'm going to Shift and grow this one so that it grows, and the Shift key is holding it size and proportion. If I don't do that, then it's going to get all contorted. So I hold down the Shift key when I do the drag, and I'll undo that so it's the right size. I'm going to place them. I don't want them both to be exactly centered, so I'm kind of visually doing that. And I also want to put a graph, uh, a text box down here, and technically I've cheated, and I have that over here. I didn't delete it. I had it from before. So I'm going to drag the audio down just to make this look a little better visually. And now I have my text box where I'm going to do the annotation over in YouTube. So that's, that's it. That's, that's the end of the video. So if I export that to YouTube, I have something to work with, right? So let me just quickly go through this. There's my, uh, let me unselect. There's my text and my audio continues. Now, for some reason that video is not showing right away. It works fine. Uh, so there's my promo for my training. And skipping forwards, there's the link I'm going to have them go to. And then at the very end, we're going to show them the video. I don't know why that's doing that. So there's the video. Oh, and this is a good good point, because that has audio in it, right? I need to go and turn the audio off on that. So I click on it, make sure I'm in the audio tab over here. And I turn the audio off, because I don't want people to hear the audio from that. All right, so now I do the export and send it over to YouTube. So that's a trick just like those sneaky people that do the baking shows that put the thing in the oven. I've already uploaded this particular video, and we're going to edit it now. What I want to do is jump into annotations. And this is where you're going to put the stuff at the very end. Now, of course, YouTube starts playing that. I don't know why, but down here towards the end is where I start doing the promotional stuff. And you can see all of that has appeared here. All right, so how do I do annotations? So I'm going to scroll over to the point where the very first bit appears. And I believe that's right here at 544. So I'm going to do Add Annotation. I'm going to click on Spotlight because that's what we want. Now, it turns out this one can't be large enough. It won't go over the whole thing, but I'm going to just make it as big as I can and sort of put it right over there. And I'm going to... You can put in text, by the way. There's a little text box uh, that will go with that. I don't want to use a text box uh, that fills in right here, and you can change the color and all that kind of stuff. But I want that to link over to my website where this is being promoted. So I'm going to select link down here. Notice you can also change the start and endings. I'm going to click on link. 
and I'm going to, from the drop down, I'm going to say associated website. Now, here's a trick that they don't necessarily tell you because if I start putting in, um, let's say that's actually, like you saw, planet5d.com, http colon, if I could type planet5d.com you'll see that that says please enter a valid URL and you're like that is a valid URL I know it's a valid URL it's got the HTTP and all that stuff but it's not really working right so there's a trick that you have to learn and I'm gonna do channel open link in new window because I want to show you that you actually have to associate a URL for your channel and that's done down here in this associated website section. That's down here. Now I've already done it. And you notice that I linked to my blog. It is planet5d.com, but I linked to the blog because that's where I do most of my stuff. And so YouTube isn't letting me put in a URL unless it actually says blog.planet5d.com because they want you to be an authority. So you can't just link over to some random wacky website. Even though planet5d.com is mine, the link has to be at blog.planet5d.com because that's what I created. Now, secretly, I also have blog.planet5d.com slash cc, which takes people to the training just like the planet5d.com does. So I, I'm going to use that link here. And, of course, I want to make sure that the length of this annotation is right. And so I'm going to scroll over and see how we're doing. And I'm going to increase the magnification on this so that the timeline expands a little bit. And I know that, unfortunately, it doesn't play automatically there. So I know it ends kind of right around the six-minute mark. So I'm going to shorten the length of time that that annotation displays over here but I also know that uh, it also reappears right here so I'm going to drag that out just a hair and then right here I want to put an annotation over this link I'm going to do add annotation spotlight and I'm going to drag it and just put it here it gets a little hard to see sometimes, especially when you're dragging, but it is a white thing that will appear later. I don't want it over my image, so I'm going to shrink it down this way. And again, I want that to be a link, and I'm going to put in my B blog link. And you notice that that's a valid link now. It doesn't say invalid link. Associated website. And then I have to figure out where to end it. I've got the join link, which I have to appear, so it's right in here somewhere. So I'm going to shrink that down to that length. And I'm just going to do the same thing for the other two graphics, the three graphics on this page. It's right... It's hard to find the exact spot sometimes. All right, it's close enough. We'll just do this for now. So I'm going to drag that one out and... Uh, so, uh, so that's where it starts and ends. You can actually change the timing here by typing or using the arrows. Okay, so right there at, I'm going to do add annotation, spotlight. You see it's created this one. I'm going to drag it over my YouTube channel. I don't care about the text underneath it. And this one's fun because it's not a link, although you check that, you want to go to your channel. So you put Planet 5D, which is the name of my channel. Uh, do I want them to open in a new window? No, this is fine. We'll leave it there. And so that's that link, and we obviously want it to start in the right spot. They make it a default length, so I have to drag it. I don't know why they make it a default length, but that's what they do. Add annotation, spotlight, 
it again grew to the wrong length. Uh, so I want that. It's going to appear here. Apparently, I, anyway, you can see where it's going to go. Grab that, make it bigger. So there's that one. And I want that to go to a video. And since it's a YouTube link, they consider that valid. And yes, I want it to start at zero. And off we go. We're doing great. So we're going to add one more annotation. I'm going to put it here over my join link. And you know how this works. I'm going to do link. And I can just type in my link down here. B5D shortcut CC. And notice it changed associated website all for me. And then the last thing, let's make sure that's the right length. Let's just scroll back to here and see what we have. If I click play, and don't that there's our associated from, link hey, that will take them if they click on the video. And I know it's not the right size. And I can't make it bigger because that's what they do. And then there's going to be a short thing. And there's a new one for that link. Let me just scroll ahead a little. And then, then we have these links, annotations, so they can do that. So that looks great. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to do Apply Changes. And bingo, bango, if we go to the video, scroll to the end. Look, there's our annotations. There's the first one, so it's going, they know where it's going. Those will go away, then we'll have one here. I'm going to scroll forwards a little bit. And look, we've got annotations right over the end of our video, so people can click on those and do what they want to do, or not. Uh, one thing to note, these annotations don't work on a mobile device. So if you're expecting them to be able to do that on their iPhone or smartphone, Sorry, but those annotations don't work. But that's how you get annotations on your YouTube video. And I highly advise that you start doing that. It is a little extra work, but if you want people to stay with your channel, you've got to ask them to subscribe and you've got to show them some other videos that they may be interested in watching. So show them.